Good morning, and welcome to worship this day on the Feast of Pentecost. Today is the 50th and final Sunday of the Easter season, the culmination of all that Jesus accomplished for us in his death and resurrection, and the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. It is the birthday of the church in that sense. The Spirit creates faith in us and makes us the people of God to carry on Jesus' ministry in our own day. You'll also notice today that our table is set. As I mentioned last Sunday, it has been almost three months since we last were able to share Holy Communion together. And that is a really, really, really long time. Even in the days when communion was celebrated less frequently, this would be a long time to not be able to receive the gift of Christ's body and blood in the sacrament. And so we are celebrating a kind of unusual Eucharist today. You are joined with us virtually, and we will pray the um, great Thanksgiving together and hear Jesus' promise to us in the bread and wine, and then we'll receive communion after the service. So today, from 12 o'clock to 1.30, I will be in, um, outside near the lower level entrance in the driveway, and you are invited, if you so wish and feel comfortable, to come to church um, one at a time, one family at a time, to receive uh, communion in a socially distanced and safe manner. So I will hopefully see some of you later today. If you can't come today, we can make arrangements to share communion later in the week. I invite you to find a posture of prayer that is meaningful for you and to rise in body or spirit as we begin this festival day remembering the gift of our baptism. Jesus said that out of the believer's heart will flow streams of living water, and in that water we know that we are forgiven. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the fountain of living water, the rock who gave us birth, our light, and our salvation. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are raised with him to new life. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning you created us in your image and planted us in a well-watered garden. In the desert you promised pools of water for the parched, and you gave us water from the rock. When we did not know the way, you sent the good shepherd to lead us to still waters. At the cross, you watered us from Jesus' wounded side, and on this day you shower us again with the water of life. We praise you for your salvation through water, for the water at this font, and for all water everywhere. Bathe us in your forgiveness, grace, and love. Satisfy the thirsty and give us the life that only you can give. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen.
Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed, alleluia. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. Let us pray. O oh God, on this day you open the hearts of your faithful people by sending into us your Holy Spirit. Direct us by the light of that Spirit, that we may have a right judgment in all things and rejoice at all times in your peace. Through Jesus Christ, our, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. A reading from Acts. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven, there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days, it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood, and fire and smoky mist, 
The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Corinthians 
No one can say Jesus is Lord without the help of the Holy Spirit. There are diff different kinds of spiritual gifts, but they are all from the same Spirit. There are different ways to say serve but we serve the same lord and there are different ways that god works in people but it is the same god who works in all of us to do everything something from the spirit can be seen in each person this the spirit gives this to each one to help others. The Spirit gives one person the ability to speak with wisdom, and the same Spirit gives another person the ability to speak with knowledge. The same Spirit gives faith to one person, and to another he gives gifts of healing. The Spirit gives to one person the power to do miracles, to another the ability to prophecy, and to another, the ability to judge with what is from the Spirit and what is not. The Spirit gives one person the ability to speak in different kinds of languages, and to another, the ability to interpret those languages. One Spirit, the same Spirit, does all these things. The Spirit decides what to give each one. A person has only one body, but it has many parts. Yes, there are many parts, but all those parts are still just one body. Christ is like that too. Some of us are Jews and some of us are not. Some of us are slaves and some of us are free, but we were all baptized to become the body through one spirit, whether Jews or Gentiles, slave or free. And we were all given the one spirit. The word of the Lord. Gospel according to John. Glory, Glory to you, you, O Lord. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked out of fear, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side, and the disciples rejoiced that they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father had sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them. And he said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I invite the children to come forward to the TV or the iPad so we can have a little discussion this morning about Pentecost. I know we talked about this uh, yesterday on our kids' time, but maybe there are some of us who weren't there. But, so I want to remind you that 
Today is the birthday of the church, so happy birthday. We are some 2,000 years old. We are still carrying forward Jesus' mission and ministry into our own day. But on this day, we especially celebrate the Holy Spirit and what happened on that day of Pentecost. We heard about it in our first reading that, that Deb read from the book of Acts, where there were a whole bunch of people gathered together from all different places, different countries. They spoke different languages. And they were all sort of afraid of each other. They didn't know each other. And then the Holy Spirit came like a rush of wind. And tongues of fire, it said, rested on them. And suddenly, everybody was able to speak and to listen and understand other languages. So this group of people, they had been strangers. They didn't know each other. They didn't know how to talk to each other. And then because of this miracle, it's as if they were all part of the same family. You could talk to somebody who didn't know your language and they could understand you. Somebody who didn't know your language could speak and you could understand. Imagine a world like that, where all of us and all of our differences, the different ways we speak, the different foods we eat, the different countries we're from, imagine if none of that mattered. We were all able to understand each other, to respect each other, to love each other and to see each other not as strangers, but as friends and members of God's family. That's really what Pentecost is all about. Because the church is all over the world, right? We're here in Lynn, Massachusetts. But there are followers of Jesus in every country of the world. We may never meet them face to face, and we may not know their customs or their languages, but we are one in Jesus because of the Holy Spirit, which binds all of us together. So let's give God thanks for that gift. Eternal God, you breathe your spirit upon us and you adopt us all into your family. May all of us, no matter where we come from or what language we speak, know ourselves to be your children, your beloved daughters and sons. In Jesus' name. Amen. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, even upon my slaves, both men and women. In those days I will pour out my spirit and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heavens and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. To prophesy is to speak the truth. It is usually a difficult truth, a truth that people are not ready or not willing to hear. That is why most prophets in the Bible are reluctant or even terrified to answer the call. God told Jonah to go to Nineveh to call the people to repent of their evil deeds. And Jonah ran the exact opposite direction, to Tarshish. Moses felt unworthy. Gideon felt weak. Jeremiah thought he was too young. And Isaiah, too sinful. Even Jesus, at the beginning of his ministry, said that no prophet is welcome in their own hometown which was proven true just moments later as an angry mob tried to hurl him off a cliff. There's a reason we have the phrase, don't shoot the messenger. It's hard to be the person whose job it is to say the hard thing, to name the elephant in the room, to deliver the news that is almost certainly going to upset people, even though it desperately needs to be heard. But there is a cost in not listening to prophets, of not heeding the voices that speak a true but uncomfortable word. A riot, Martin Luther King once said, is the language of the unheard. When no one listens to the peaceful protests, when black parents still have to have the talk 
with their children about how to survive an encounter with the police. When six years after Eric Garner was suffocated in a chokehold as he pleaded, I can't breathe, the very same thing happens in Minneapolis and so many other places in between. There comes a point when the only language left is blood and fire and smoky mist. Those words from the prophet Joel were always scary to me. They did not feel like good news at all, a sign of the Lord's great and glorious day. They sounded like judgment, like something apocalyptic. And maybe they are. The word apocalypse, after all, simply means an unveiling, a revealing of what's hidden beneath the surface. And there's a lot, I'm afraid, about being a person of color in America that people of color have always known, but which people who look like me have been reluctant to hear. It's not easy to hear how things I do every day without fear, like going for a walk in the park or in my own neighborhood without being seen as suspicious, or taking my time browsing in a store without being followed, or getting pulled over without the slightest bit of fear for my life. It's hard to hear how that is not the reality for my black and brown sisters and brothers. It just isn't. There are so many situations where I am given the benefit of the doubt because of my skin color and my gender. There are so many things I just take for granted that have to be struggled and fought for by others. It has to be exhausting. It has to be infuriating. It has to be humiliating to have to justify your existence, your dignity as a human being, your right to simply be here every single day. I can see how it might even turn to rage and explode. And so on this Pentecost Sunday, this day when the Spirit falls upon all flesh with tongues of fire, this day when the truth is spoken in every language so that all may hear, I am going to try to really listen. I'm going to try to listen not to myself or what I think is appropriate, but to the voices of the unheard, those whose shoes I have never walked in, those who take a knee because of all the knees that have been taken on them. I'm also not going to allow the actions of those who would try to exploit the pain of our black siblings for their own agenda, like the anarchists descending upon Minneapolis from out of state to simply cause destruction and distract us from what this is really about. I won't let them shift the narrative away from the injustice and oppression and generational trauma that black people endure and of which they have rightly had enough. I'm still trying to figure out what that looks like for me. It's probably going to mean some difficult conversations with people in my life for whom this is their everyday reality. It's probably going to mean reading some books that will disturb me or even convict me. It's probably, no, it's certainly going to mean a change and my behavior. But if this story is true, if the Spirit really is given to us this day so that we may understand each other and live together as one, I don't see any other way forward. We can't keep pretending that racism isn't real, that white supremacy isn't real, that it isn't a sin against the body of Christ. And we cannot stone the prophets who are begging for our attention. We have to allow the fire of their pain to reach our hearts. Because, beloved, and this is the important part, because our neighbor's salvation is also tied up 
with our own salvation. Dr. King said all people are caught up in an inescapable network of mutuality tied in a single garment of destiny. What affects one directly affects all indirectly. I can never be what I ought to be until you are what you ought to be. And you can never be what you ought to be until I am what I ought to be. It is everyone's humanity that is scarred by racism. And it is everyone's humanity that is restored as it is dismantled. That is why, as the prophet Joel said, that even the voices of the slaves would be heard on God's great and glorious day, together with sons and daughters, elders and young people, men and women. In other words, those who always have a seat at the table and those who have never had a seat at the table. All are essential if we are to hear and know the truth about God and God's dream for us. It is a dream that has been shared by many throughout history. And it is a dream that has often been laughed at as impossible. Some in our story today, when they saw people gathered from every known place on earth, speaking and listening to each other as though they were one family, actually thought that everyone was drunk. It may feel just as preposterous to those in our own day for whom the dream has been deferred one too many times. But we proclaimed this vision to be the word of the Lord. We claimed it as true. And we also claim this Jesus who comes among us even when we are scared and don't know the way forward and says, peace be with you. Actually, before he does that, he breathes on us. Can you even imagine such a thing right now when other people's breath feels more like a danger than a blessing and says, receive the Holy Spirit? The word for spirit in Hebrew is ruach, which literally means the wind or breath of God. God breathing God's life into us is really just another way of speaking about Easter the universal vindication of the wrongfully accused in raising Jesus Christ from the dead, the restoration of life that was brutally taken away. A crucified person, after all, doesn't die because of the actual wounds. They die because their bodies become too heavy for them to support, and finally, they can't breathe. The crucified Christ stands in for all of them. This week he stands for George Floyd, but in him George also rises, as do we all. In him their voices are not silenced, but magnified. In him their dignity is restored, their memory made eternal. In him they have the final victory, a feast to which we are all invited if we're willing to sit together. Because that's where all of this is headed. The vision of Pentecost is a vision of the realm of God, the heaven on earth and beyond earth for which we all wait in hope. It is not segregated there. It has no borders. It has no one universal language or cuisine or traditions. The breath of God breathes in everyone, and in the kingdom of God, we all know one another and are responsible for one another as family. May this Eucharist today, in which the Spirit breathes upon this bread and wine as she did at Pentecost, and where the forgiveness of sins that Jesus promised is made present in his actual body, his brown body. Bring us closer to the day when every body is sacred, where their lives matter, where their presence is not a threat, but a blessing that brings healing, life, and a glimpse at salvation. For as Paul so beautifully put it, in the one spirit, we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. Drink deeply, beloved.
Breathe deeply. We all belong to each other, and we all belong to God. May God give us the grace to listen, to hear, and to live like it's really true. Amen. With the whole church, let us confess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, 
who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. By the hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need, responding to each petition by saying, Come Holy Spirit, renew the face of the earth. We call on your spirit of unity, giving thanks for our different vocations. Activate and utilize the diverse gifts present in your church that they reveal your love for all. Come Holy Spirit. Renew the face of the earth. We call on your spirit of life, present in air, wind, humidity, storms, and oxygen in our atmosphere, breathing energy into all things. Heal with your breath the whole creation, especially those who struggle to breathe due to the air pollution. Come, Holy Spirit. Renew the face of the earth. We call on your spirit of righteousness. Wherever we as a people are divided, unite us. Wherever we are prideful, humble us. Give each one of us a heart for justice and empathy. Come, Holy Spirit. Renew the face of the earth. We call on your spirit of healing. Bless nurses, doctors, midwives, chaplains, counselors, and hospice workers as they care for those in need. We pray for all who long for comfort, especially the city of Minneapolis. Come, Holy Spirit. Renew the face of the earth. We call on your spirit of friendship. Give us a spirit of welcome to those whom we meet in this congregation and outside these doors. Surprise us daily with unexpected grace that we rejoice in every blessing you send. Renew the face of the earth. We call on your spirit of hope as you let your saints in all times and places stir us the desire to follow their example, leading us from death to new life in you. Come, Holy Spirit. Renew the face of the earth. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let us share a sign of peace with each other.
merciful God, our ordinary gifts seem small for such a celebration, but you make of them an abundance, just as you do with our lives. Feed us again at this table for service in your name, in the strength of the risen Christ. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. Fulfilling the promise of the resurrection, you pour out the fire of your Spirit, uniting in one body people of every nation and tongue. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Thanks be to you, O God, for the power of your loving spirit. We worship you for your spirit, who forms life out of chaos and dust. We bless you for your spirit, who ignites the words of the prophets. We praise you for your spirit, who carries your people together in unity. Glory be to you, O God, for the comfort of your creative spirit. By your spirit, your son preached and healed, rebuked and forgave. Dying on the cross for a wounded world, he gave over his spirit. Risen from death, he pours out your spirit on all who believe. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. On this bread and wine. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Manifest here the body and blood of Christ. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. On all of us gathered together from our homes. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. On this earth, its waters and lands and skies. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit on plants and animals, and even on the stars. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. We plead for your Spirit to cry aloud in us, with us, and for us. Breathe your life into our bones. Anoint us for service with your oil of gladness. Translate our speech into tongues of wisdom. Shower on us your gifts, love, joy, peace, Patience.
kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Sanctify the whole earth with your truth. Bring us at the end with all your needy children into the homeland of mercy. Once more we praise and worship and bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, God of supreme might and mercy, God of the cross and the empty tomb, God of the power of justice and peace, now and forever. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, Father who, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come, thy will be done, done on earth, earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily, daily bread, bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, Therefore let, let us keep, keep the, the feast. feast. Hallelujah. As I said at the beginning of today's service, you are invited to come partake in this feast between 12 o'clock and 1.30 today at the lower level entrance in the driveway. You can come one at a time or as a family to receive um, the body and blood of Christ. If you cannot come today, please call or email me and we'll find a time to make an appointment this week for you to commune. This is still God's table and all are welcome here. body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Let us pray. Faithful God, you fulfilled the promises of Easter by sending us your Holy Spirit. 
Open our lips by your spirit, that every tongue may tell of your glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Go out into the world sent as Christ Jesus was sent, gifted and empowered for the common good. Dream dreams, pursue visions, and speak of God's goodness in the words of those who would hear. And may God give hope to your dreaming. May Christ Jesus set rivers of life flowing within you. And may the Holy Spirit unite us as one body and set you ablaze with joy. Amen. Amen. Just a word about our concluding hymn. O Day Full of Grace is a hymn that we sing every Pentecost Sunday here at church. But this year we're in for a bit of a treat. An organization called the Association of Lutheran Church Musicians, of which David and I are members, put together a virtual choir um, over the last couple of weeks, uh, bringing together 960 voices and 364 in instrumentalists all across the country and even the globe. And all of those vo voices which were recorded individually in isolation are brought together in this symphonic uh, sound. And if you look carefully, you can see a couple of people you may know.
Welcome once again to worship this morning on this Feast of Pentecost. It's so great to be together, and I trust the Spirit has knit us together even closer as one body. I hope to see some of you this afternoon as we receive Holy Communion outside. If you cannot be here again, as I said today, uh, please call or text or send me an email, and we will find time to meet together in a safe way to share the sacrament. Next Sunday is another special treat. Presiding Bishop Elizabeth Eaton of the ELCA will be our preacher. She has recorded a sermon for all 10,000 congregations of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. And many of us who would never have the opportunity to hear her preach will be able to hear her next Sunday on Trinity Sunday. So we look forward to that. In the meantime, may God be with you and those you love and keep you safe and well. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is, risen is risen indeed. Alleluia. You are the body of Christ raised up for the world. Be at peace and share the good news. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.